he, he really took his role as dentist, uh, as, as a public service. Granddad is someone who uh, just has a really remarkable sense of life, um, sense of enthusiasm about things. He was so honest and so, um, so sincere. And something I really admired about him was um, he took care of all patients, regardless of whether or not they could afford it. Oh, gosh, he became an icon here. Before he had uh, Alzheimer's, he was just someone that was interested in so many different things, um, you know, science, literature, um, a bug in the yard, a plant. Um, and now, you know, of course, he doesn't, he's not able to read uh, and understand more complicated things like he used to, but he still has that that same sense of enthusiasm and interest in things. See where it is? Yeah, it's where it's supposed to be. No, no. The shoestring hanging down. Oh, okay. Wow, you're right. <laughs> Quit tickling my butt. Okay, let's try again. I do think that both of my parents, uh, in their own style, helped create that culture here of um, caring for each other and of kindness and neighborliness. And um, because I've lived in other places and other and other towns, small towns especially, will have that to assist. But I've never seen it like it is here. It's really special. So Saturdays you used to go down to town. And you'd see a bunch of pickup trucks parked up and down the street and guys in bib overalls sitting around on benches chewing tobacco and smoking cigarettes. But Pittsburgh was kind of this kind of quiet, peaceful place. Pittsburgh was just such a perfect place to grow up. Oh, it was just a very quaint village back then. There's a development coming to Pittsburgh that's going to be the largest in North Carolina's history. It's the fifth largest in the country. Pittsburgh is going to kind of stop being that sleepy little town that it used to be when I was little. <laughs> He's just kissing me because I'm messing around down here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was. <laughs> oh, my. I was I was the senior, summer before my senior year in high school, and my parents went to the beach a lot. We were, this before my dad built his place, and we were at Crescent Beach, and we were getting ready to go home. And I'd been seeing this guy, really cool guy, at the bowling alley, and so uh, the night before we were going to leave, this guy and I were going to get together and exchange um, addresses and all that kind of stuff, and. My mother and daddy said, Martha and Charles, who were friends of theirs in their bridge club, are going to be at Ocean Drive. They're just coming in today. We're going to go down and see them tonight. And I said, no, I can't go. I'm supposed to stay here. I want to stay here. I've got this day. Oh, no, no, no. You can't stay here by yourself. Well, you're going with us. Besides, they have a nephew with them. That His name is Noah Jr. And I thought, Noah Jr., yuck. And so, anyway... I cried all the way to Ocean Drive, and anyway, went up there, and I was kind of pouting, sitting in the living room, pouting, because I had to be there, and here came this hunk that walking out of the kitchen. I mean, he had was suntanned, he had on white pants rolled up, and oh, my, it just took my breath away. He had uh, six kids, and I think 20-some grandchildren. I've lost count. It was a lot. Gosh, my dad had such an influence on me. When I was growing up, um, he was my hero. He definitely taught us early on that uh, every, everyone had value, regardless of the color of their skin, and um, he treated his patients equally. I think we were on our way to the mountains, and we stopped at this rest stop, and there was a, uh, an African-American man. He was um, well-dressed, but elderly man, probably, I don't know, probably in his 70s or 80s. and. Uh, his car actually caught on fire. The engine was on fire a little bit, which was easy easy to put out. But he had a heart attack, and um, I think he he pretty much was dying on the sidewalk. He fell down, and there was a, a lady there who was a nurse, and because um, I think I remember my dad saying, "Is there a doctor? Is there a doctor?" And this woman said, "I'm a nurse," and so she came, um, and she got down the ground. But when it came to time to give him um, mouth to mouth resuscitation, do CPR. Um, she started crying and she wouldn't do it. And I just remember my dad was, was furious about that. And he just you know, pulled her away 
And uh, I can get emotional thinking about this. My dad, um, you know, he, he didn't hesitate, you know, and he, he saved that man's life. And, you know, he didn't, that, that to me as a child just spoke volumes. You know, I was so, so proud of him. And that's what he stood for was everyone has value. And um, that was not typical at that time period. Well, I just think, you know, like as soon as granddad would come in the room and you were a little kid, you know, you're going to be flying up in the air. You're going to be trying to pull your wrist out of the monkey trap or fake fist fighting. You know, there's always, you're always doing something. He didn't come in and wasn't interested. He came in and he, you could tell that he was glad you were there and wanted to, um, wanted to interact with you, you know. Birthday boy, happy birthday. You know how old you are? You're 86. 80, you're 86 years old. 86? Yeah. <laughs> I think if you, if I tell you that when he retired, after 48 years of practice, where <clears throat> he was um, he was dentist to three generations of the same family, and when they had the um, we had the retirement dinner at um, the roadhouse, there were so many people there that the fire marshal came and said there are more people than this building is supposed to accommodate. But then he realized who it, was, who it was and what it was for. He said, well, just be careful. Don't block the doors. And he didn't make anybody leave. So that kind of tells you how he had endeared himself. That's when you retired, after you had been a dentist for a long time. Uh-huh. What, what does it say about that? The Chatham County Dental Society. Uh-huh. You know that. Well, I think one thing that's that struck me about watching him uh, come down with Alzheimer's is, you know, we've seen him lose so much um, in terms of his place in the community in a lot of ways and his memories and his ability to do certain things that he, you know, just took for granted being able to do before. But uh, definitely I've been struck by, in all that loss, how much of who he is continues to shine through and that uh, at the core he's still the same person. He's, he's just pure radiant love and I think that's who he truly is. I think that's really what's at his core.